Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Genki Lesson 22 textbook practice video. Today, we're going to be covering causative sentences. The causative plus te ageru, te kureru, te morao. We're also going to be covering commands in Japan's three different ways to do commands. Another if, another one, as if we need another one, but this is the ba ending for if. Despite slash but in Japanese with noni, and just like, basically like a metaphor in Japanese with no yoni and no yo na. But before we get started with that, you know I have to do this every single time. So I just wanted to let you know that if you want to support the Tokini Andy channel, please consider checking out the Patreon where we have textbook practice videos, listening and shadowing videos, and vocabulary videos, and lots more coming soon. We're going to be releasing the Genki 2 tests in a couple weeks, and then lots of new content for both Genki and the intermediate content coming up. We've also got a merch store and Ko-fi and YouTube, so please consider checking those out if you like. So you would like to support the channel. Um, but even if you can't help support financially, just hitting the like button and sharing this with anyone you know who's studying Japanese helps as well. And also, thank you so much, SimperX. I really appreciate that. SimperX just dropped $20 and $2 in chat with a number one stamp and a cool stamp. So there's also, as SimperX just pointed out to us here, down at the bottom of the chat, there's a little, a little money symbol, and you can actually donate live here on YouTube as well. I really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for the, the $22 donation. I appreciate that. Good to see you, man. It's been a long time since I saw you on the Come to Japan streams because uh, Come to Japan, my trusty mod, has not been streaming lately. You got to get on that, man. But anyway, good to see you guys. So who do we have here tonight? We've got Japan Trail Cam. Come to Japan, Dan. Thank you so much, man. And uh, Yuki Achik, Who's right over there? Gitai with the dab. Hello, Carpe Diem. How you doing? Pitovnikov, hello, good to see you. Ben Beer Kaktusum. I still don't know how to say your name. Say your name. You're gonna have to tell me how to say that one of these days. Uh Pitovnikov said he's says he's been been lazy recently. No worries, man. It's good to have you. Screwdriver, Owen Harrison. Uh one in it. Back for more punishment. Enlightenment, of course, is what you mean. The legend Ellie. The legend L. Hello, Felipe. Good to see you. Hola, hola. And Lena, konnichiwa. And my, is my mic not on? Okay, my mic is on. Oh, wait, you're fine. Okay, sweet. Wow, you scared me there. If I just did that whole opening without the mic on, I'd be very, very sad. Meng Kong, woohoo. How's it going? Uh, Kadir Sabutai Aksoi. I can't read your whole name perfectly. I'm really sorry about that, but thank you for being here. Chili Cat, hi, I'm on lesson six now. Still on the way to catching up. We'll see you when you get back here, but you can also hang out if you'd like live on stream. I hope the videos are helping you out back there. So thank you so much, guys. It's, I, uh, we've got a lot to cover today. So lesson 22 is basically the lesson in Genki where they realized they had one lesson left. Uh, they had to lesson 22, 23, and they realized they had about three chapters worth of material to pack into the last two lessons. Maybe four lessons worth of material to pack into the last two lessons. They already had all of the lessons planned, all of the sections planned for lesson 23, and they realized they had to pack everything into lesson 22. So that's what we have today. We have a ton of material to cover, starting off with causative sentences, but thank you so much, Simper X, with the Come to Japan heart donation. Oh my god. Jesus, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Some of that's going to have to go to come to Japan for uh, his sponsored trips one of these days. Jeez, thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> sign up to Perks to get really cool tag thingy. Ah, yeah, Carpe Diem. I always forget to mention the memberships as well. There's memberships on the channel as well. Thank you for reminding us of that. Carpe Diem. All those buttons are down below, below the chat or below the video. You nailed it. Uh... Hello, found your channel recently. Love how you explain the grammar points. You make them look easy. I was stuck in lesson three. I try. I try. Sometimes I don't succeed at that, but I do try, especially as we get into more difficult content. It's sometimes hard to simplify it. I don't feel like tonight is going to be extremely difficult. I've been saying that a lot recently, though, but um, it's just a lot of material. So so I'm probably going to um, I'm going to keep the the chat sequences between sections. I'm going to be keeping them sort of short. But we're still going to try and get your question and answer sections in so that you can all know what's going on. Perhaps there is a director's cut with a chapter 24 in it. Maybe, maybe. That, that might be what's going on here. But, all right. So I'm going to get a drink of water. Thank you again, Simperx. I really appreciate that. You didn't have to do that at all, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much. 
it will be good put to good use helping out the channel i hope all right so are you guys ready to jump into this are you ready causative sentences all right let's go ahead and do it causative sentences Causative sentences are actually pretty easy to conjugate. If you know about Godan conjugation, which we're going to go over really, really quickly right now, just in case you don't for some reason, uh, there's, there's just a simple rule that you can learn. And if you learn this rule, you'll know how to do causative conjugations. So, is my, uh, my bottom thing is showing up on screen. All right, sorry about that. So, any verb that ends in utsu, mu, bu, nu, ku, gu, su, and sometimes du are Godan verbs. So, a verb that ends in idu or edu, not the symbols idu and edu, but the sound idu or edu are usually ichidan verbs, but I believe for causative verbs, no, it matters, okay. So, godan conjugation basically is talking about the hiragana chart. So, there's five different vowel sounds in Japanese, and those are a, i, u, e, and o. Now, you attach them to consonant sounds, so this is the ka consonants, and they are ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. The dictionary form is the u sound. So for the verb aruku, or to walk, we go to the u column. Aruku is the dictionary form. You move up and down this chart, like this, and add a different ending, and you get a different conjugation for go down verb. So you go up to aruki, that's the uh, mas stem. You go down to aruke, that's the... Uh, potential stem, so can walk, for example, and you have to add something else. So for, oops, it says passive forms here. There's a, there's a mistake. Right off the bat, let's get that out of the way. Let, let's fix it. Okay. Causative. Causative. Excellent. Very professional, Andy. All right. So causative form of go down verbs is the a column. So we go up to the a column and add sedu. So we basically go up to aduka and then add sedu, aruka sedu, aruka sedu. So to make someone walk or to let someone walk is what the causative is, to make someone, to cause someone to walk. And it can also mean to let, but we'll get to that in a minute, a little bit more. Let's just keep going over the conjugations first. So the causative form for ichidan verbs is just drop the du and add sasedu, sasedu, and that's it. So midu, you cut the du, and add saseru, mi saseru. And that's ichidan verbs, right? Of course, there's the two irregular verbs that are usually irregular all the time. They're also irregulars for the causative, and that is suru and kuru. Suru becomes saseru, so it's just like a, it's just the ending from the ichidan verbs, and kuru becomes ko saseru. So they all end in saseru, so at least that's easy to remember. Now, what a causative sentence is, it basically takes a director, a person who, who does the action, they're marked with the wa particle. I'm sorry, the, um, what am I saying here? Hito wa dare ka ni nani ka wo saseru. Hito wa dare ka ni nani ka wo saseru. So this is the, um, the person who has to do the action. This is the dare ka. The person who has to do the action and then the thing that they have to do. So this is the act. Nani ka wo saseru. Right? So the director, this person m makes this person do whatever this is right here. It can also mean let, but it will depend on context most of the time. So let's go over, go over some uh, example sentences so that you can see what I mean. Because with the example sentences, I'll be able to show you sort of some situations where you can tell whether or not it's let or make someone do something. And sometimes you just won't, at least not in standalone sentences. Usually in the context of a sentence or the context that the sentence is in, you'll understand whether or not it means let or make. So. Tabe saseta. I made or let them eat. Tabe saseta. So this is an ichidan verb. So you just drop the du and add sase du. And the, uh, the causative form is conjugated like an idu edu verb, like a, an ichidan verb. So to get the, the past tense, the short past tense, you just drop the du and add ta. Tabe saseta. I made, let them eat. <clears throat> Our next sentence is ikase nai de kudasai. Please don't make me go. So this is sort of obvious from content text that it's not let me. So please don't let me go. Obviously, that's not what you would be saying. I suppose you could think you could probably imagine a situation where that might that might make sense. Maybe someone's breaking up. Please don't let me go. But I don't think this is what you would uh, say in that situation or it might be. 
But anyway, it probably translates as please don't make me go because they're asking, please don't kudasai. Ikase nai de kudasai. Kawase mashita. I made or let them buy something. Kawase mashita. So, one thing I needed to mention is that verbs that end in u, they don't change to a, they change to wa via the last little character there. So, kao becomes kawa, seru. And of course, the past tense, the past, uh, in for the formal past tense is mashita. So, kawase mashita. I made or I let them buy. But it's going to depend on the context whether it was make or let. So let's go into some more complicated sentences so that I can give you some more information. So, these two examples look the same, but there's a small difference. There's the ni particle and the o particle. So, this isn't talked about in Genki. This is actually from the dictionary, the Dictionary of Basic Japanese gr Grammar. And it's an important point. So, for intransitive verbs, those are verbs that don't require an object, um, the person who is going to do the action is marked with o if they're being forced. So if they don't want to do the thing, they're not doing it of their own volition, of their own will, they're going to be marked with o. So if the person who has to do the action is marked with o, you know that this is make them do, not let them do. So haha wa boku o oyogasemashita. My mother forced me to swim. Because it's marked with o, we know it's forced. It's not allowed me to. Now, for intransitive verbs, if it's marked with ni, it can mean either, but it probably means allowed me to. So, haha wa boku ni oyogasemashita. Because it's marked with ni and it's an intransitive verb, it's probably allowed me to swim, let me swim. My mother let me swim. Now, transitive verbs, those are verbs that require, require an object, like unten uh, suru requires a, a thing you drive, those will always take the knee particle in relation to the person who has to do the action. So, once again, you can only tell from context whether a transitive verb is let or make someone do something. So, this sentence, Tomodachi wa boku ni kuruma wo unten sasemashita. It could mean my friend let me drive the car, or it could mean my friend made me drive the car. Now, that's going to depend on the context. The context could be that you, the listener, knows that I don't like driving. In that sense, if you heard the sentence, Tomodachi wa boku ni kurumo unten sasemashita, you know it means made me drive. But if you know that I love driving, and you hear that Tomodachi wa boku ni unten wo sasemashita, then you know that it's probably let me drive. So it's just based on that context. The next sentence is, Mainichi tousan ga I now appreciate that my father made me run every day. I didn't like it at that time, though. So, the second sentence here gives context to the first sentence. Ano toki yadatta kedo. At that time, I didn't like it, or I hated it. Which means that this probably doesn't mean let me run, it means he made me run. Mainichi tousan ga hashiraseta koto. Uh, the fact that my father made me run all the, every day. Well, ima, now, kansha steimas, I appreciate that. Kansha suru means appreciate that. So let's go ahead and jump into our dialogue and I'll let you get all of your questions out at me because this, the explanation is fairly simple, but maybe it's not as simple as I'm thinking it is. So. Any questions you might have, let me know. If you're watching this in the replay, let me know down in the comments if you have any other questions. So, for this lesson, we have some special guests for our dialogues. If any of you are patrons, you may have noticed that already, that the listening and shadowing video has Yuki's sister and brother-in-law instead of myself and Yuki. I don't show up in the listening and shadowing video this week, except for in the introduction and the outro. So it's Yuki's sister and her brother-in-law and Yuki doing the listening and shadowing video this week, and therefore they are the uh, they're the characters in the dialogues. So this is Yuki's sister, Mami, and Yuki. I'll read it slowly one time and then at full speed. Then we'll go over the English translations and get to question time. All right, inu wo kaitai na e sou na no inu ga suki dakke. Hmm. 
もちろん好きだよ。犬を飼ったら何をさせたいうーん、トイレを覚えさせたいかなまあ、それはそうだけど、面白いことはないのそうだね。あと、泳がせたいかな、はい、full speed. 犬を飼いたいな。そうなの犬が好きだっけうん、もちろん好きだよ。犬を飼ったら何をさせたいうーん、トイレ、トイレを覚えさせたいかなまあ、それはそうだけど、面白いことはないのそうだね。あと、泳がせたいかな、right, Let's go with the English translation. We've got 犬を飼いたいな。This is just straight up, I want to have a dog. え Really? そうなの Really? 犬が好きだっけ Do you like dogs? So this little、uh, small two plus ke, if you put it at the end of a sentence or at the end of a phrase, it means that you're asking for confirmation because maybe you forgot whether or not the previous statement was true. So in this case, 犬が好き That's the statement.、Um, you're asking, Do you, did you like dogs? Really? Because I forgot. I forget whether you liked them or didn't like them. So I need you to confirm. 好きだっけ Uh, in this situation, it pretty much sounds like I thought she didn't like dogs. So that's a little extra bonus for you. I thought she didn't like dogs, and now she's saying she wants a dog. So I'm like, eh, ski da ke? I thought you didn't like dogs. Mm, mo ちろん ski da yo. Yeah, of course I like them. Inu o kattara, if you get a dog, nani o sase tai, what do you want to make it do? Sase do. So you can, you can, um,、uh, You can use any conjugation with sase do or with the causative form, including want to make someone do something or want to allow someone to do something. So, nani o sase tai? What do you want to make it do? One second. Okay. Mmm, toile wo oboe sase tai ka na? Mmm, I want to house train it, I guess. So, toile wo oboe oboe ru. For, d- for dogs or for cats or whatever, basically means house train in English, which means teach them to、uh, go to the bathroom outside or, or use a for cats litter box or whatever. So, toile o oboeru. Toile o oboe sase tai. I want to make it learn to use the bathroom, is what the literal translation of that is. Ma, sore wa so da ke do. Well, of course that, but, ke do, omoshiroi koto wa nai no, but you don't have any fun things? That you want to teach it or imply it here. So, da ne. Ato, oyogase tai ka na? Well, also, I want to let it swim, I guess. So, in this case, probably not make it swim. She probably wants to allow it to swim, is my guess. But it could be read as either. So, question time. Tell us something that your parents made you do as a child. You could be happy about it or not, doesn't really matter. But, kodomo no toki, haha wa boku o oyogase mashita. When I was a child, my mother forced me to swim. I actually wanted to swim. My, mo- my grandmother lived by a lake, so we went swimming a lot, but I just figured I'd use this sentence. It could also mean, if, I, if you know that I like swimming, it could also mean that when I was a child, my mother let me swim. So, kodomo no toki, haha wa boku o oyogase mashita. So, we have a lot to cover today, so we're gonna make sure we start the next section around. Five to ten minutes from now at the longest. If there's a lot of questions, ten minutes, if not five minutes. So, what is something that your parents made you do as a child? All right. Let's see what I missed in chat. Is that a new mic or am I just unobservant? Does it sa- sound better? By, do you mean that by the sound or just by looking at the screen? It's not a new mic. It's the same one I've been using for a while and I've had this set up for a while. But I keep changing the、uh, angle because trying to get a better sound. I think this is the way I'm going to be keeping it for a while now. <laughs> Hello. Du, du. Perhaps there is a director.、Uh, not really.、Hmm? Not really. Line high five. Lena high five. <laughs> The good students here. Andy san wa boku ni nihongo o oboe sase mas. Yes. Ah, benkyo sase mas ne. Benkyo sase mas. Yes. Andy san wa. Oh, okay, I already read that. Boku wa. 僕にバナナを食べさせました。何それ<笑>仕事する僕。僕は僕には、うん
<laughs> Had to immediately go check out the video with Yuki's sister and brother-in-law. Ah, oh, nice, nice. Yes. They'll be happy to see that. I need to send them I need to send them a link to that so that they can watch it as well. They were they were especially her brother-in-law was excited about it. He might be watching right now. Suguruku mitte ka? Mitte ireba. Konbanwa. Ima suguru to mami san no listening no video no hanashi o shiteimasu. Ima ano chat ni iru Rina san to iu hito wa ano koufun shite suguru to mami san no video mi ni ikimashita te. I just was talking to Suguru and telling him how you guys were talking about their video. Perfect sentence, Pitovnikov. That's it. Please, please, I think they did a good job. Ooh, Same for me. I also had to do that. I had to do breakfast dishes from the time I turned eight until I was. Well, as long as I lived at home. So anyway, the sentences were, um, I, I forgot to give the, the readings. Pitovnikov's mother made him clean his room, and one of its parents made her clean the kitchen. Ah, so so Yeah, I have to fix that. Sorry. Hold on. Ano, kodomo no toki haha wa watashi ni yasai wo tabesasemasu. Uh, so you want to put the past tense? It was very close. Tabesasemashita. Tabesasemashita. Otherwise, very close. One in it, yes. Yuki just mentioned, and I missed this for a second. You gotta, um, you just gotta switch that around. So it's, Ryoshin wa watashi ni. So you have to have, uh, the, the watashi ni ne. Uh, so you could drop the watashi ni if you wanted to. So you could just have, Ryoshin wa daidokoro o souji sasemashita. If you wanted to, but generally you need to mark yourself or the person that is actually did the thing with the knee particle. You're the person who's making the other person do something is marked with wa. Right, always forget the tense. No worries. It would be understood anyway because you said kodomo no toki. All right. All right, we got two more minutes for people to respond and then we'll move on to the next section well maybe she still makes you eat them that could be that could very well be maybe your mom still makes you or will make you eat. well no because you had konomo no toki you would still have to say past tense but i gotcha i was thinking of passive sorry no worries no worries it's a it, it's confusing particles very confusing that's probably the hard, hardest part of this section is remembering the particle order so if we go up to this this slide will probably be an important one. So the director, the director doer, sort of a weird, no, I guess that works. So the director is the person who says to do something. So hito wa, dareka, the doer, whether it's myself or someone else, doesn't matter. Marked with ni, usually, like I said, and excuse me, unless it is a intransitive verb. I forgot to, well, whatever. I forgot to animate all of the, uh, the furigana tonight. Hopefully it all shows up. Hopefully it all shows up. Completely forgot to animate everything. <laughs> Oops. All right. Good. So we don't have too many people here tonight, so I imagine that's probably the only answers for that section. So I'm going to start inching our way into the next one because there's still a lot of different sections to cover tonight. The next one is going to be causative sentences plus te ageru, te kureru, te morau. Um, in Genki 2 Second Edition, this was actually separated into... It was not separated into a separate section. The third edition split it off into a completely separate section, which was probably a good idea because it is a lot of material to put in, uh, into a single section. But it's not significantly different from just the straight up causative. So to make the causative te ageru, te kureru, te morau form, you just take the causative te form. So for example, uh, taberu becomes tabesaseru. So the te form of that is tabesase te, te, tabesase te. And then you add ageru, kureru, or morau. Now these are very similar to just the regular te ageru, te kureru, and te morau. The main reason this is brought up here is that if you have a te ageru, kureru, or morau, it's always let to allow 
someone to do something. It's never forced or make someone to do something. So the setup of a sentence is exactly the same. I'm not going to go over um, the differences between ichidan and stuff because it's the same conjugation as before. Uh, hito wa dare ka ni nani ka wo sasete ageru. So the director allows the doer to do something. So the example sentences are going to sort of point out what the differences here are between ageru, kureru, and morao. I'm not going to go into total detail because we covered that earlier in Genki 2. But I'm going to use the same verb to sort of point out the difference. So, tabe sasete ageru yo. I'll let you eat it. You know, so I'll, I will let you eat it. Tabe sasete ageru. So the, um, the relationship between people, they're the same as the regular te ageru, te kureru, te morao. So if you need to cover that, go back to lesson, I believe it was 16. And that should give you more of an idea of how you're allowed to use these. So tabe sasete kurenai, won't you let me eat it? Won't you let me eat it? So kureru, obviously it's going to be someone allowing me to do something. So tabe sasete morao means I'll have you let me eat it. So this is more like getting someone to allow you to do something. So for example, if there's food on the table and it's not your food, but you want to eat it and you want the person whose food it is to allow you to eat it, you could say something like, Tabe sasete morao. Actually, Yuki's sister said that last week once for, I can't remember exactly what, but it basically means I'm going to let her to, I'm going to get her to let me eat it. So that's what the te morao will be. Get them to allow me to do something. Is what te morao will be in this situation with uh, the causative. Te kureru um, will be allowed me to. Allowed me to. And te ageru will be I'll allow someone else to. That's the basic difference here. So some more complicated sentences we have. Kodomo no toki. Okaasan wa Harry Potter wo. When I was a child, my mother didn't let me read Harry Potter. That's a true story. I still read it, but she didn't let me. I just had to get someone else to buy it for me, and then I would hide it under my bed and pretend I was reading other stuff, like the Bible and stuff. I feel like I would have that in my bed next to me so that I could stick Harry Potter under the pillow and pull that out and pretend I was reading it. I don't know how they ever figured, didn't figure that one out. Maybe they just didn't walk into my room much, but anyway. So she didn't let me read. So this is someone else and in reference to me. So the full sentence would be But as I said earlier with one and its example sentence, you can drop uh, the person if it's obvious from context and especially if it's yourself. The te kureru makes that obvious that you're talking about yourself, by the way. Next sentence, uchi ni kittara suichi de asobasete ageru. If you come to my house, I'll let you play switch. And I will, of course. Tomodachi no at a. But anyway, so ageru obviously is me giving out to someone else, a permission maybe to someone else, or someone that's not me giving permission to someone else. So like people unrelated to me in any way. That's when the te ageru is used. Let's get my friend to let me drive his new car. His new car. Let's get my friend to let me drive his new car. So that's the volitional combined with the causative. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the dialogue. I'll read it slowly one time and then at full speed. Go over the English and then we can do question time and you can ask me any other questions that you might have. So Yuki says, Oyogase tai no? Doko wo? Ma, kawa to ka? Ah, so, donna inu wo kaitai? Oki inu? Chisai inu? Hmm, oki inu datta ra? たくさん散歩してあげたいな。それと、ソリーを引っ張ってもらいたい。いいね。私は乗せてもらいたい。小さい犬ならだっこさせてあげるよ。Okay, so full speed. Although I did start that at full speed. 泳がせたいの? どこ? 
。まあ、川とかあ、そう。どんな犬を飼いたい大きい犬小さい犬うん、大きい犬だったらたくさん散歩してあげたいな。それと、ソリを引っ張ってもらいたい。いいね。私は乗せてもらいたい。小さい犬なら抱っこさせてあげるよ。はい、let's go with the English for that. First sentence was, 泳がせたいのどこ You want to let it swim? Where? Or in where? まあ、川とか Well, in rivers and stuff? あ、uh, そ、so, う。Oh, really? どんな犬を飼いたい ?What kind of dog do you want to raise? Cow is to raise a pet or to have a pet. 大きい犬小さい犬 ?A big dog? A small dog? Hmm. 大きい犬だったら、if it's a big dog, たくさん散歩してあげたいな。I want to take it for lots of walks. Literally, I want to. Oh, that's just, that's not the,、uh, that's not the causative. That's literally just, I want to take it for walks. それとそりを引っ張ってもらいたい。Also, I want to have it pull a sled for me. Uh, mm, 引っ張ってもらいたい。Okay, that's, that's also not the causative. That's just the てもらう。So, this is sort of expressing what the difference is there. I just want to make it or have it pull a sled for me.、Uh, いいね。私は乗せてもらいたい。Nice. I want, I want it to let me ride it. So, here we finally have. Uh, a causative sentence. 小さい犬なら抱っこをさせてあげるよ。If it is a small dog, I'll let you hold it. So I'll allow you to hold it. 抱っこ is to hold or to hug something. Especially if it's small. 抱っこをさせてあげる。So, <clears> te <throat> morao on its own is sort of like the causative because it's getting someone to do something for me.、Um, no se te morai tai. I want, I want it to let me ride it. No se te morai tai. So it's sort of like the causative, but slightly different. So tell us something that your parents let, let you do as a child, allowed you to do. So, 子供の時母は僕に泳がせてくれました So, when I was a child, my mother let me swim. So, this is the opposite of the other sentence, despite looking almost the same. 子供の時母は僕に泳がせてくれました Pretended reading play. <laughs> Very fast, I'll let him know about it. Looking all cool with the sunglasses. <laughs> nice. Mom, it's not what you think. <laughs> no wizard stuff. Yeah, that, that、mm, probably would have gotten in just as much trouble for either one. I, I imagine they would have been equal levels. Probably would have worked as a distraction from the Harry Potter book, at least. Probably. Would be easier to explain. I suppose. I imagine it would be the exact amount of trouble I would have been in. I love my mother, but when I was a kid, she had some interesting ideas. She's lightened up a lot in her, in her young age. So let us know something that your parents allowed you to do when you were a child. And、uh, we'll aim for. Here it's 9 34. We'll aim for 9 40 for moving on to the next section. We're, we're making good pace, so I think after the next section, we can allow a little bit more time between the sections to,、uh, to answer the question times because the next one is, has the most content in it. Despite being one of the easier sections, there's just a lot of different rules to cover. So there's that. But anyway. Is my voice sound really weird tonight? I feel like it's very, very dry in this room. But it's very strange.、Um, Yuki and I were talking earlier. We were playing some Dragon Quest X in Japanese together. And all, most of the time we speak in Japanese. And I was talking to her. I was like, I haven't s p o k e English at all today. I wonder if. I hope I don't like it. Like, I'm able to speak English. Because when you switch, you speak a full day of a different language and switch back to another language. It's a little hard to get back into the rhythm and use a very different part of your mouth when you're speaking English and Japanese. Like, the Japanese seems to be more of the front of your mouth, whereas English is more of the back of your throat, at least for me. So, when I speak Japanese all day and then I switch to English just in time for the live stream, I feel like I start losing my voice immediately. I don't know if it's like I forgot to speak how to speak English or what's going on exactly, but it's kind of annoying. Kodomo no toki, haha wa. 
バ、バヒツ馬ってことバヒツを走らせました。ハビツ、バ、バヒツ。母は I'm not sure what that is, バヒツ。Do you mean a... 走らせました。Do you mean a, a horse? Like, 馬馬を走らせました。走らせてくれましたてくれる、mm. You could also, like, um, use just a regular、um, causative form to say that they let you do something. It's just more obvious with the te kure do that it's let me do something. Let me know what you meant there, one in it, because horses. Okay. So you just use uma. Bahitsu, I don't think, is a very common word. Bahitsu, wakaru. She actually had to search for it. So probably not too common of a word. You'd probably just go with uma for horse. Because there's no plural in Japanese,、uh, uma is both horse and horses. So you'd probably go with uma wo. De hashirase mashita. She allowed the horses to run, or she allowed you to run with the horses? That'll depend on what. The, ah, my mother let me ride her horses. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Nos. Nosas. Okay, so there we go. Joba. That's a new word for me. Joba. So there's two different things you could use. So you could say, haha、uh, wa. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to go from the beginning. Uma wo ni no sa se te. Would be one way you could say it. Or you could say the next one would be、um, there's actually a word that Yuki just told me, which is riding on a horse, which is haha wa uma watashi ni. Let's just go with the full sentence. Ano uma uma ni uma a joba joba sase mashita sase te kure mashita kure mashita. So, joba suru means to ride horses. So, watashi ni joba sasete kure mashita. So, you don't even need horse because riding the horse and the horse themselves are combined into the single verb. Joba suru. So, haha wa watashi ni joba sasete kure mashita. Difficult one there. Kodomo no toki haha wa watashi ni handboru o sasete kure mashita. Nice. Perfect. Kodomo no toki haha wa tomodachi no ie ni. うん、okay. Good sentence, evening smile. Good to see you. Kodomo no toki, Bara Blakey, how's it going? Haha wa boku ni kendo no re. 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 A kendo train. I don't know what a kendo train is, but I'm assuming that's what it is. So that's a, that's a different. Grammar point, so it's just using the verb kure do to, to receive. But your sentence is okay if you're talking about that she gave you kendo, a kendo train. <laughs> then, it, then it works fine. Ah, cool. mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll have to get you to confirm that. Teenager no koro. Chichi wa boku ni skater wo drive. Skater? 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 Ah, scooter, ne? Scooter. Wow, my good job, Andy. Scooter wo drive sasete ageta. Sasete kureta. Kureta. So, um, because it's you, ne? If he did it for someone else, then you would use sasete agemashita or ageta. But since it's you, it's gotta be kureru. Horses. My mother let me. Okay, we already got there. Kuremashita. Okay, you already, you already figured that out. Nice. Stupid online dictionary, I gave up. Yeah. If you're using Jisho for the online dictionary and it doesn't have one of these, here, let me show you. Where is my other window? There it is.、Uh, Toki, that should get it to show up on the screen. Browse. Okay, there we go. Jisho. So let's see. If it, if, if it doesn't have this green right here and you're looking up a word, 
like if you're using G show, if it doesn't say it's a common word, if it's not in the JLPT, etc., you're probably not going to want to use it in a new sentence. You'll probably want to go with, so if you were to search horse or horses, that's what showed up for you. So because there's there's nothing, it's not on the JLPT, there's no green common word, there's no Wani Kani level, there's, there's nothing. There's probably, yeah, there's nothing. You'll want to avoid those words for the most part. Not always, and you might see them show up in something somewhere. But for the most part, you're going to want to avoid those. So as long as it has stuff like this, hiki, counter for animals, obviously that's common. I can't believe that it doesn't just give you uma for horses. That's ridiculous. That's a, that's a miss on the G-Show, honestly. That's not your fault at all. Okay. So let's go ahead and close that up there. Kodomo no toki, ryoshin wa watashi ni Nintendo ni wo wo o asobase te kuremashita. Watashi ni Nintendo wo asobase te kuremashita. So once again, it's for you. So you can't use ageru when it's in relation to yourself. You can use it when you give someone something to someone else. So when it's going out from you, but when it's coming into you, it needs to be kureru or morao. Kodomo no toki, haha wa boku ni nani mo, nani mo sasete kuremas... So do you want to say she let you do anything or she didn't let you do anything? So there's a big difference there. So, kodomo no toki, haha wa boku ni nani mo sasete kuremasen deshita or kurenakatta would mean that she didn't let you do anything. But if you want to say she let you did, she'd let you do anything, nan demo sasete kureta. Nan demo sasete kureta. But if she didn't let you do anything, then you need to drop the O and change it to negative. So, kurenakatta. Konnichiwa, Gian des. Genki des yo? Genki des ka? Gitai. I hear Joba. It reminded, reminds me of all those horse riding arcade games. I never really tried any of those, but they did look fun. I don't know. She let me train Kendo. Ah, she let you train Kendo. She let you do Kendo. Ah. Okay. <laughs> so, this <laughs> show is like a train, like a, like a, that you get on. You know, like a shinkansen, like a bullet train. Or, that's not a desha, but basically just a train that you get on. So, yeah. Okay, gitai got you there. Choo-choo. That's the perfect way to explain it. Desha is a train choo-choo there. Uh, train is uh, renshu, I guess would be the easy way to say it. Kendo renshu sasete kuremashita would be fine. Renshu wo sasete kuremashita. So, kodomo no toki, haha wa boku ni kendo wo... I would say renshu. Renshu sasete kuremashita. So we're using the, uh, I don't know if you're here for the last section, which is where we went over the causative, but it would be suru become saseru, which is uh, uh, made me do or let me do. Sasete kuremashita. One in it. Kodomo no toki, chichi wa fune wo hashirasete kuremashita. Oh, ii ne. He let you, um, to drive it, ne? Hashirasete kuremashita. Nice. My dad let me do that too. It was fun. Do you offer online training for a few students? Do you mean like uh, live lessons for with like face to face? I don't at the moment. I have lots of stuff on Patreon that is that goes into further detail, but I don't have time to do one on one training or face to face training at the time. I literally. I use about 90% of my time for regular work and this, despite the regular work being part-time, 90 to 95% on making these lessons and making the Patreon content. And then the other 10% is studying Japanese because I still have a lot to learn, a lot to learn. So I need to keep up. Thanks for the G-Show tip. Didn't know that. Yeah, very important one to uh, get used to. It's very easy to pick very strange words otherwise it's probably a good idea too if you're not a, if you're not pretty sure um like if there are no common words a good idea is to take the word that you found in gsho drop it into um into a google search just on its own and see what comes up see if it's used in other places 
in regular looking sentences and not just in like large papers that are out of a university or something. So that'll give you a better idea. Cool. I have no idea how any of this works so far behind. No worries. You're, you're trying, which is what matters. Oh, thanks for the link, Dan. Okay. We're all eternal students of something. Sono tori desu yo. Sono tori. Kodomo no toki. Mm. Ano, koko ni. Mm. I think I said it was also okay. So I said I would probably use the denshu sasete kuremashita, but you could also use kunden sasete, sasete kuremashita. So you can mention, wanted me to mention that kunden would also be okay. Okay. Good job, guys. It's not super easy, but it's also not too confusing, I hope. Anyway, we can check for the frequency usage of specific word. I feel like there was a frequency dictionary at some point, but I don't know a link to it. If it has the, the green common link on the Jisho, on Jisho or other dictionaries, it's usually frequent, used frequently enough. But this is why it's sort of important to learn vocabulary words in context in um in sentences and stuff like that and in context when you're trying to make a sentence from scratch obviously you just got to go with what you got so you're going to end up finding um you're not necessarily going to be able to use a word that you already know that's why you have to look it up in that situation just try to use a common word and see what happens that's been my that's what's worked for me if i use a word and it's weird without fail people will say Ah, uh, so this ka, or they'll just look at me kind of weird, or they'll say, hmm, something like that, like pretending to understand, but it's very obvious they don't understand, hmm, like that. Um, and then you know your word's wrong, so you can try something else. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, though. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes with words. The more you do, the more you learn, in my, in my opinion. Um, there seems to be this trend in language learning right now, which is fear of making mistakes, and therefore trying crazy ways to not make them. Whereas in my experience, making those mistakes is how I learned not to use that word there or how I learned to use another word there. So somebody, like if I say, a lot of times Japanese people won't correct you um, directly, but what they will do is they'll say the correct word. Like if you if you were to say, <laughs> that would be a hard one for someone to correct. But just for example, if you said that, then they might come back with you and say, for example, and then you know that that's the word. Or they say your Nihongo is Jozu. Uh, yeah, they might. But if it's a complete mistake, like really, really, they don't understand at all, they probably won't give you the Nihongo is Jozu. If they do, they'll look at you like this while they say it. But anyway. How I learned to not use a noun when I needed to use a verb. There you go. I remember the great ways I have messed up. At least now I tend to remember them correctly. Yes. It's important to look it up, too. If, if no one corrects you and you just know you made a mistake, it's a good idea to try and figure out later why. A lot of people, if you do, if you do like online lessons on Skype or something, a good idea is to record them. I, I never had time to go back and watch many of them, but every once in a while, if I had a big mistake that I remembered and I wanted to go back and check because the teacher didn't correct me, I was able to do that. Jozu means um, good at. Good at. It's a very common compliment here in Japan. Regardless, like even if you just said hello, people will say that your Japanese is very good, skillful. Like saying the taxi was a vegetable and not cheap, nobody told me anything, but I did realize I messed up from the reactions. Skilled, good. Yes, that's, that's a good way to learn. Okay, guys, it's, it was 15, 16 minutes. It's much longer than I, I said it would be, but that's okay. It's time to move on to commands in Japanese. So the command that is uh, explained in Genki Lesson 22 is nasai. Now, this command is aimed at someone who's generally lower than you in rank, usually parents towards children or teacher, teachers towards children, but sometimes people who are way up above you in the company might use this, maybe. Uh, and it's also used in test instructions. So if you're taking the JLPT, for example, or when Japanese students are taking tests, I, I actually had to record a test for I recorded it here in this studio for my for the high school that I work at part time. We recorded an English test for them and Yuki read out the instructions in Japanese and she was using nasai 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 over and over again for all of the instructions. So it's very common on tests. So that's why that's one reason it's important to learn it even if you don't plan on commanding children to do things or being a teacher in Japan for kids. 
To make the nasai command form, you use the mas stem for both ichidan or whatever, and go down verbs and add nasai, and that's it. Now, Genki mentions in their footnotes and in a couple little sections within the section a bunch of other commands, and I figured I should go over them quickly because these ones are they're going to show up a lot when you're studying, reading stuff, or you probably won't use these ones too much, but you'll hear them a lot. This is the imperative form, and it's a very strong command, and you probably shouldn't use it, but you're going to hear it a lot, and you do need, you might use it someday, but you should be careful with it. It's a direct command, very strong. So this is for go down verbs. You just go to the a column, and then you're done. That's it. That is the command form. For ichi dan verbs, you go to the o column. So basically, the do you turn it into ro, so tabe ro. Um, so yeah, for aduku, which is a go down verb, you just go down to the e column, aduke, and that means walk. It's a command, direct command. For an, for an ichi dan verb, it's miru, miro, look, direct command. And that's it. The only other one that they cover down in the footnotes there is this one, and that is the dictionary form plus na. Dictionary form plus na. So for example, tabe du na. And that means don't do something. So it's a command to not do that thing. And all you need for that is the dictionary form plus na. So here they all are in practice, plus an extra one for you. Tabe na sai. Eat. You'll hear parents telling their kids this in every restaurant you go to everywhere forever in Japan. The next one is, it's similar. You can actually drop the ending of this and make it sound a lot gentler. And that's tabena. Go ahead and eat. It's more like um, you'll hear like older people saying this to younger people in the, or people above you saying it to you if you're below them. If you want to like eat something, for example, and you're like, ooh, that looks good. And someone will say tabena. It's a shortened form of tabena sai, which is like a command, but it's, it's softened. It's like, go ahead, you can eat it. Go ahead, eat. But it's sort of like a command. So tabena, go ahead and eat. Tabero, eat. Mom's very angry now. Tabero, probably at her husband. Taberuna means do not eat. Maybe there's poison in it. Taberuna, don't eat it. These are all too strong, really, to be used in daily conversation. You're never going to use them at work. You'll hear them in anime and see them in manga all the time. You'll probably see them on TV and just regular TV shows, and you'll probably see them in books from time to time. So it is important to know them. Tabenasai, you'll hear a lot more. And you'll probably even get to use it if you come to Japan and, for example, teach here. Some more complicated sentences. Sore wo yamenasai. Stop doing that. Another one you're going to hear parents telling their kids all the time. Sore wa yi. Sore wo yamenasai. Osoku made neru no wo yamenasai. Stop Sleeping until late in the day. So, osoku ma, osoku, osoku ma de neru no. So, the no is the nominalizer. So, it turns this into a noun. So, we can treat it as the thing you want them to stop doing. Yame nasai. Yameru means to quit or stop. So, this could be anything. Osoku ma de neru no. Oh, yame nasai. Stop sleeping until late in the day. For example, I'm talking to myself. Yuki thinks I'm talking to her. I'm not. Daijabu da yo. Ikitai nara ikinasai yo. If it's true you want to go, go, man. This sentence I wanted to put because Genki, the description in Genki sort of makes this sound like it's a little bit rude, but it's really not. It's actually a polite command. It's technically polite. It's just that you're, um, you're speaking to someone below you in rank. But it is a polite way to command someone below you to do something. So this is sort of endearing, almost like, ikitai nari ikinasai yo. If you want to go, then go. It's okay. You can use this for people who are younger than you, below you in rank, or for kids. So don't be afraid to use it. Yamero! Stop! You'll hear this one in any video game you play. Any anime you watch, someone's gonna say, Yamero! For sure. Okay. That brings us to the dialogue. I'll read it slowly one time and then at full speed. We'll go to question time and I'll answer any questions that you might have about this section or any other section. 
if you're still with us on the replay, let me know down in the comments by saying, I'm still here, man. Okay, I'm here. Mami san. Machi nasai. Daijoubu desu yo. Kawaii ne, kono ko. Kawaii kedo. Kora, yame nasai. Oi, kamu na. Gomen nasai. Nomi chan, kochi ni ki nasai. Kono kutsu wa matarashi yo. Yame ro. Gomen nasai. Nomi chan, dame. Full speed. Machi nasai. Daijoubu desu yo. Kawaii ne, kono ko. Kawaii kedo. Kora, yame nasai. Oi, kamu na. Gomen nasai. Nomi chan, kochi ni ki nasai. この靴は新しいよ。やめろ。<笑>ごめんなさい。のみちゃん、ダメ。はい、let's go over the English. 待ちなさい。wait。大丈夫ですよ。かわいいね、この子。it's okay。he's cute。this guy。literally。かわいいけど、he's cute。but。こら。やめなさい。こら means。hey。stop。こら。やめなさい。stop。おい、噛むな。hey。don't。Bite. So this is the, the negative. Don't do something. Kamuna. Gomen nasai. Nomi chan kochi ni ki nasai. I'm sorry, Normi. That's the name of my grandmother's dog, so that's why we used it. One of her dogs. Come over here. Kochi ni ki nasai. Come over here. Kono kutsu wa ma atarashi yo. These shoes, shoes are brand new. Yamero. Stop it. You could obviously say this to dogs and it's fine. Or cats. Nasai is also used a lot for animals. Gomen nasai. Nomi chan, dame. I'm sorry, Normi. No. Dame. All right, question time. Tell your imaginary or real child or pet to do something. Nomi chan, tabe nasai. Normi, eat. All right, that's a good section. Let's see. Oh my god, I've done that veggie cheap thing so many times. Also, film English. Uh, ego, ega. I've done that one too. I've done ego, ega. I still do ega, ego sometimes. Like, it slips. It's an easy one to make a mistake. A lot of the... Some words are just so close to each other, it's hard not to make mistakes with them in Japanese. Your Japanese is not good until you don't get jozut. I used to say that your Japanese isn't good until someone says, uh, umai. Nihongo ga umai. But... I realize that that just means you're probably mid to upper beginner. <laughs> you're right. It's when they don't actually mention it at all or until much, much, much later in the conversation. Like looking perplexed almost that, you know, the eternal struggle to get there. My girlfriend finds my mistake so funny. Most people do or cute, usually cute. Knighted Jozu. So nice to have you YouTube premium now. Hey, guys, YouTube premium is awesome. I... I'm so glad I got it again. You can download stuff. There's no ads, but you still get to support the creators because still money goes to them, which is amazing. Uh, the download thing is the best. You can download and you can still watch videos or listen to videos with the screen turned off. Amazing. Hey, konnichiwa, Infobro. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Infobro. How's it going, man? Hey, Dan. Yuki and Mr. Muscles himself. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, yeah. Hi, tricep son. <laughs> what nani? Hey, Dan. Um, what time is it for you guys? Are we really up at 6.50 learning Japanese? I'm new here. Someone just suggested I check out the channel. Rin, welcome to the channel. I hope you, uh, you find some of the content here useful. The time here is 10 p.m. here in Japan. A lot of people are up at 6.50 a.m. though, yeah. We are a bit from all over daytime in Europe. Yes, there's people all over the place. A lot of people from Europe in that area. 9.50 a.m. here. Woo-woo. Four minutes to midnight, 1 p.m. in UK. Thanks for the replies. No worries. Yeah, thank you. Hey, kimi, nenasai. Hey, uh, wo, katazuke nasai. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Huh? Hey, kun, ne? 
Hey, Kun. Hey, Kim. I thought you were saying like it's combining English. Hey, Kimi. Hey, Kimi. <laughs> Nenasai. <laughs> Naru hodo ne. Hey, Kun. Hey, Kun. Nenasai ne. Go to sleep, hey. It's his son. Hey, a o katazuke nasai means clean your room. It's really useful if you use YouTube a lot and you got YouTube music. Not bad. Word. 10 a.m. in Argentina. Martin Liu is in Argentina. I did not know that. Awesome. Thank you for being here from all over the world. So cool. Good one, guys. All right. Let's see if we can get a few more uh, commands out there for imaginary or real children and pets. I still like, hey, Kimi Nenasai. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Kimi Nenasai. だ、だまだ、だまれなさい。だまりなさいなじゃい。だまりなさいだと思うよ。だまりなさい。さで。さで。うん。So for each dumb verbs, it'll be do and for go dumb verbs, it's the a column, ね? So saru is a regular go dumb verb, so it needs to be sade. And yeah, damari Nasai, so the mas stem of damaru is damari because that is also a godam verb. So damarimas, for example, damari nasai. Close man. Inu, shabe nasai. <laughs> shabe da nasai. Hmm? Shabe di nasai, ne? Shabe di nasai. Shabe is also one of those exceptions to the ichidan, uh, the, yeah, the ichidan rule. So shabe is actually just a regular godam verb. So shabe di mas, shabe di nasai. Shaberinasai. Any good places or books to study vocabulary words outside of Genki? So, a lot of people here like the. They like the Tango N5 deck. Tango N5 is floating around. They also seem to like the core. Is it the core 2K? Uh, Anki decks. Those are basically uh, flashcard decks for the application Anki. So, those are two popular ones I just dropped in chat there for studying vocabulary that people seem to like. Okane wo kaseginasai. Yes, do that. Make money. Okane wo kaseginasai. That's a good way. Is that what you're telling your child or your pet to do? <laughs> I hope it's your pet. What game was it that I was playing that the pets were making money? There was animals, there was a cat and a dog. Ah, oh, that was a... Uh, learn Japanese through... What was the name of the game? I have it on my Steam. I did a whole live stream series of it like a year ago. Learn Japanese. Learn. What was the name of that game, Dan? Do you remember, Dan? Learn Japanese to survive. Kanji combat. Yeah. The dog and the cat were farming and making us money. So that was what was happening. Oh, yeah, that was great. Oh, my God. That brings back some memories. Whoa. <laughs> Hontoni arigato, says Sir Masashi. You're welcome. Besides my normal lessons with tutor every week, your streams are really helpful. Porando kara aisatsu. Arigato gozaimasu, Sir Masashi. I'm happy to hear that the lessons are helping. I hope they can continue to help. There's lots here and lots more to come. So, okinasai, gakko ni ikinasai, says Martin. Perfect. Nice. Andi no aisu, tabete gomen nasai. Are? Mm. So nasai is actually also, also used, that's the nasai, same nasai that's used in gomen nasai. Just so you know. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Ando-san. We just moved here in Yokosuka and so glad I found you guys. KDC, hello. I'm glad you found us too. Welcome to Japan. I hope you, uh, you enjoy it. And I hope that you can help the channel can help you uh, get around a little bit easier. This live stream is too advanced for me, so I'll be checking out more beginner friendly videos. Thank you for the warm welcome here. I love the way the, this live stream is set up. Can't wait to partake. Good luck. I hope you enjoy it. The uh, the stream cuts, the orange thumbnails for Genki One, the green thumbnails for Genki Two, are where you're gonna want to start if uh, if you're brand new, because those are the cut versions. So all of this part where we're just chatting is cut out of the video, it can be very distracting for some people. So if it is for you, then I would suggest checking out the cuts. They're much shorter and to the point. So I hope you uh, you find them helpful. Thanks for shopping by, Bin. I wish my dogs make money. Instead, they eat kanji combat. Haha, <laughs> and evil ducks. Yes, in July, I'm going to N4 exam. I already got N5 next year. Nice. Keep it up. All right, guys, we're moving at a good pace. This section's going to slow us down a little bit. 
this section is another if, and that is the ba one. We, we've covered it in part. Remember Bayokata? Yeah, I remember Bayokata. I was very annoyed about Bayokata. I did a rant about Bayokata and the fact that they taught you how to make the ba form in, what was it, lesson 17 or 18 or something? But not what it meant, just how to use it in a form that needed it. Completely insane to me. And here we are in lesson 22, and we're finally going to learn what the ba form is for instead of just how to use it in another, more complicated form. Good job, Genki. All right, so let's just do a quick review since you probably already know how to make the ba form from that lesson of how to do it. We're going to do a crash course in Godan conjugation again, just for those of you on the stream cut. So Godan conjugation talks about this, this hiragana chart. There's five vowel sounds, and you combine them with consonant sounds to make the Godan conjugation chart. This is the ku set for aduku. Uh, dictionary forms of verbs end in the u sound, so aduku is the dictionary form. You move up and down the chart and add different endings to make different conjugations for Godan verbs in Japanese. Many, many different verbs are Godan verbs in Japanese, pretty much all of them, except for the ones that end in the sound idu or edu. Those are called ichidam verbs, but you don't have to worry about that for the ba conditional. They all are conjugated the same way. Even ichidan verbs are conjugated like godan verbs when you're doing the ba form. So that's nice, right? So tabe du, you don't cut the du and add something. You just go up to the same column, the e column, and add ba. So adu ku, which is to walk. You'll move down to the e column, which is adu ke, and you add ba. So adu ke ba, adu ke ba. And this means if walk. That's all it means. If walk, adu ke ba. So basically, it's the uh, the imperative form, the command form, which we learned earlier, plus ba, and that becomes that means if. Now, this lesson in Genki focuses on the verbs that are conjugated into the ba form. So it focuses on yeah verbs. Okay. But there is also a ba form for basically everything in Japanese, for e adjectives, for na adjectives, for nouns, and for everything in between. So by that I mean e adjectives include anything that ends in an e as in negative conjugation, so the informal negative, so tabe nai. You treat those that that nai as an e adjective when you conjugate it. So turning it into the past tense or whatever, as well as turning it into if. So if you were to take tabe na e and you wanted to say if not eat you would use the e stem which means you cut the e basically everything before it is the stem so tabe na and add kereba tabe na kereba if not eat tabe na kereba so that's important for e adjectives you cut the e so you get the e adjective stem so for um tanoshi fun you cut the e tanoshi kereba if fun and that's how you conjugate e adjectives. For na adjectives, you you don't use it kereba. It's naraba, which is similar to nara, or de areba. Now, in my sense of this, de areba is a little bit more formal, a little bit more dramatic, and naraba is a little more a little more casual in in my sense of things. Nouns are treated the same way as na adjectives. Naraba or de areba means if that noun, if that na adjective, if that e adjective. Uh, also, tai, by the way, is treated like an e-adjective. So, tabe tai, want to eat. So, if you want to eat, tabe ta kereba, if want to eat. The negative of na adjectives, I just want to mention this quickly, quickly, janai, which is the negative of des, so na adjective or noun janai. So, for example, the, a noun, oh, did it, my stream just die? Did my stream die? No, I'm good. Okay. So, the negative of a noun, so like sensei, teacher, sensei janai, not teacher. If not teacher, it would be sensei janakereba. So you just cut that e and add kereba. Lot going on there, right? Okay. But Genki does focus mostly on verbs. So let's go over some, some sentences. I'm going to do verbs and everything else because you might as well just learn it now. So the first sentence is benkyo sureba gokaku If you study, You'll pass. Just a basic if then sentence. Sorry, my uh oops. My mouse is being stupid. 
just a basic if then sentence. 勉強すれば合格します。If you study, you'll pass. The next sentence uses an e adjective, and that is おいしければ食べます。If it's delicious, I'll eat it. おいしければ食べます。So you're watching someone eat something, and they're like, whoa, this is amazing. You didn't want to eat it before, but now it's like, おいしければ食べます。I'll eat it if it's delicious. 先生ならば or 先生であれば Either one is fine. Though であれば feels a little bit more formal to me. わかるでしょう Since this has a わかるでしょう Very informal sense, I'd probably use ならば先生ならばわかるでしょう If you are a teacher, you'll understand for sure. I believe that nada comes from ならば I feel like that's the case. I can't remember 100% off the top of my head. But I believe that this feels more like if it's true that you're a teacher. So just like nada. Sensei nada wakaru de shou. You could use either one. Sensei nada ba wakaru de shou. So this might be a little bit more formal than just plain nada. If you are a teacher, you'll understand. Right? For sure. Jozu de areba. Mise na sai. Nihongo ga jozu de areba. Mise na sai. If you're good at it, show me. If you're good at Japanese, show me. Nihongo ga jōzu de areba, mise nasai. Can you turn off the heater? Go m e n ne. Arigato. If you're good at it, show me. So there's a combination of ba and nasai. Some more complicated sentences. We have ashita. Ashita wa samuku nakereba. If tomorrow isn't cold, I want to go to the mountains. So, you conjugate negative adjectives, so samu kunai, as e adjectives. So, you cut the e and add kereba. Samu kuna kereba, yama ni ikitai. Now, I have no good news for you. This is a little bit hard to get used to. All this, con- this multiple layers of conjugation. Samu kunai, so there's a conjugation to get into the negative. Samuku nakereba in a second conjugation to get it into the if form. It's a little hard to get used to. But if you do it a hundred times, you'll start to get it. So you just have to use it a bunch and you have to encounter it a bunch. I say use it a bunch because no matter how many times you hear this, getting it out of your mouth is still going to be a little bit difficult. So, ashita wa samuku nakereba yama ni ikitai. So I suggest trying to make sentences like this as much as you can. If tomorrow isn't cold, I want to go to the mountain. Okay. <clears throat> Motto omoshiro kereba kaira nakatta kedo. If it was more interesting or fun, I wouldn't have gone home. But. Motto omoshiro kereba kaira nakatta kedo. It's a rough sentence. Kami sama ja na kereba deki nai to omo yo. If you aren't God, I don't think you can do it, you know. I say this too. I say this to her a lot. If you aren't a god, I don't think you can do it. You know? If you want to see, you should go to the front. So, this is a combination of something from Genki 1 and Kereba. So, Mitai. Cut an E there. Mita Kereba. Alright, so this is a fun little thing here. This is going to sort of express the difference, this sentence here, between tara, so for example, kitara in this case,、uh, oops, I hate when that happens, kitara, nara, kuru nara, ne, and ba. So, what are the, we've got all these ifs, so what is the difference? So, these sentences explain it pretty clearly. So, the first sentence is with da. So, ando san ga kitara. This means if or when, depending on the context, Ando san comes, I will go home. So, if we know that Ando san is coming, we know for a fact he's coming, then this means when Ando san comes, I will go home. So, the condition upon which I will go home is that he arrives. So, Ando san ga kitara kaidimas. Now, if the context is that we're not sure he's coming or not, then Ando san ga kitara kaidimas. Then it means if Ando san comes, I'll go home. But, Basically, what's important is that when he gets here, I'll go. Okay? So the next one is nara. So, ando san ga kuru nara kairimas. If it's true that ando san will come, I'll go home. 
now, he doesn't actually have to show up. This doesn't matter. Like, there's no, like, ta-da, when he gets there, I'm going to go home. So the condition for me going home is him arriving. The condition for me going home in this case is whether or not it's true that he's coming. So this sentence is kind of rough in this situation. It's like, oh, if he's coming, I'm going home. He doesn't have to arrive before I go home. It's the fact that he's coming. If that is true, then I'm going home. So there, there's a big difference between those two there. I hope you can see that. The next one is, Ando-san ga kureba kairimasu. So this one is, if Ando-san comes, I'll go home. If not, I'll stay. So this is sort of putting some emphasis on that condition. If he comes, I'll go. So And when he arrives. So when he arrives, if, if he comes, I'll go home. It's... Uh, and when he arrives, I will go home. So the condition of me going home is him arriving. Um, so yeah, that that's what it's focusing on. More on the condition. It's it's um, yeah, that's it. It's a little bit more focused on the condition than this one up here, which is just like it's more focused on me going home. And here's the condition for me going home. Whereas this one is more focused on the condition of ando san ga kureba kairimasu. If ando san comes, I'll go home. And then if that condition is not met. I'm not going to go home. I'm going to stay. So that's the more important part of this. But these are often interchangeable for when it's uncertain if the person is coming. If it's uncertain whether or not the person is coming, then they're somewhat interchangeable. Um, if we know for a fact they're coming, you're probably going to go with tada more often. But nada is very different from these. And that should express it somewhat. All right, so let's go over the dialogue. I'll read it slowly one time, then at full speed. Then we'll go over the English and get to question time. So, Honto ni gomen nasai. Ma, i kedo. Chisai inu o kaeba. Toreningu ga raku da to omotta. Ma, kawai kedo. Sukoshi taihen desu ne. Do shio. トレーナーにお願いすれば言うことを聞くよ。フォースピード。本当にごめんなさい。まあいいけど。小さい犬を飼えばトレーニングが楽だと思った。まあ可愛いけど少し大変ですね。どうしよう。トレーナーにお願い
you don't usually use it on its own. I can't think of a good example sentence with it on its own. Most you, yeah, you're usually going to use it in combination with one of these, I feel like. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I can't, I can't think of a good uh, example sentence with just moshi. But if someone can find something like that, that would be great. But I think in most situations, it's going to be used in combination with one of tara, nara, or ba to put more emphasis on the if. And, and to sort of, you got to remember that, that in Japanese, so a lot of these words like tabun and moshi and stuff like that, conjugations in Japanese, so things like uh, whether you know it's going to be the past tense or if it's an if or not, come later in the sentence. In English, if is at the beginning of the sentence. So you know that everything that comes after that is conditional. That it's if this happens. right? But in Japanese, in this sentence, for example, ashita tenki ga yokereba, until we get to the ba, we don't know that this is a conditional. We just know that it's tomorrow, weather. So adding moshi to the beginning of the sentence signals that this is all a conditional, but you still need to use the grammatical form ba, tara, or nara. So, moshi ashita tenki ga yokereba hikingu shitai. So, we can sort of indicate ahead of time with the moshi that it's going to be a conditional, which essentially in, in practice puts more emphasis on the if. It's not required, but you can use it. Go to the mountains even if it's cold. Fair enough. Question. So Genki mentions that you can only use ba with sentences that end in a positive note. Good result. But the if it was more interesting, I wouldn't have gone home. Yeah. I don't know about that. Um, I saw, I remember that. Hi. 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 Oh. Yuki says that she feels like when moshi is used, it's uh, signifying that there's there's more hope that the thing will occur. That's an interesting thing. That's an interesting point there. I didn't know that. But that makes sense. But it, it puts more emphasis on wanting it to happen, I guess. So in the dictionary, I didn't see anything like that. Hold up one second, sorry. There's no mention of that fact in the dictionary. Not not to suggest that Genki is necessarily wrong there. Um, I believe I believe that Genki does mention as well that while that is mostly the case, it it's not like a hundred percent of the time. But maybe I'm wrong about that. Where's the positive thing? You usually use the a ba b pattern when the condition a g a guarantees guarantees a good result in b therefore the sentence below is natural while the sentence though not impossible that's the important sentence there i feel like sounds rather odd hashideba densha ni manyaimasu arukeba densha ni okuremasu oh yeah so in that situation where the ne the result is negative they're saying you should probably use tara uh aruitara densha ni okuremasu which makes sense. I, I guess, yeah. I guess. Um, <laughs> Most people don't. Don't. You your if it's a, yeah in practice it doesn't end up like that. It may. So. Iwakan aru? Asta wa osoku made nereba. Unchiga osoku made nereba karada ga zettai naoranai toka te ittara. Ma futsu ni okashii ne sono bunjo. In practice, I don't think it matters. I don't think in reality people make any, make any effort to differentiate between the two. Perhaps, perhaps it, it like if, if, if you were to put the number of sentences that have negative 
negatives in the condition and then were to run a they you know run a algorithm against them to find out how many were using Tata and how many we were using Ba. It may happen to be the case that Tata is more common. But in practice I feel like it doesn't oh, there goes the stream again. Did I freeze? Okay. I froze again. Anyway, I'm back. Uh, in practice, it doesn't seem to be the case very often, which is why Genki, of course, puts though not impossible. Not seem, have gone, does not seem like a good result, or am I just not good at these mental gymnastics? It's not a very good result, but in practice, it's, nobody really seems to make that, that, uh, that actual difference. And I don't think it's actually a grammatical rule either because it's neither in the dictionary nor does Genki state that it is a rule. So, I don't know. Those little things, I don't, I don't know if they're helpful or not. I don't know if it's true or not. Yuki's looking it up in, at the moment. Actually, I'm closer. Okay, there we go. Genki does... And thank you, Ananit. You, you remembered that. Nice. Genki does say that it makes the sentence sound odd, so I'm still interested in how often it usually applies here. Nihongo no hayakuchi naraba. Nihongo no hayakuchi naraba. Wakarimasen. Wakarimasen. Gomen. Asta tenki ga yokereba. Soto de hiru gohan mo tabetai. Good sentence, one in it. Perfect. Great lesson, Andy. Thank you. You're welcome, Sarah English. I'm happy to hear that. Moshi moshi. Ayaman Suleiman. How's it going? Good to see you. Asta tenki ga yokereba. Shigoto ni ikemasen. You're unable to go to work. All right, that's a that's a good uh, that's a good rule to have. Hi. She seems to have found something. Kaitenないね。書いてないです。そうそう、はい。ね、ここに書いてあるのは、もし皆さんが迷ったら、タラを使いなさいと。はい、それは大体全部。はい、オッケー。はい、そう。ユキがルックルックユキがルックデップ。オーマイガード。そう、ユキルックデップ。
Gotcha. The keyboard is very uh, forgiving one with katazukeru. You can use zu. Kata, katazukeru. I guess if you're using hiragana, you'll want to go with the du on the keyboard. Du as opposed to zu. To get that small zu. Thank you, Masayama. Appreciate that. All right, guys, good. So we've got two more full sections. It's already 10.30, but it's, it's, we're going at a better pace than I was expecting for tonight, so I'm happy about that. I hope we're good with Ba, and I hope that Yuki's research over there helped us out with Ba and Tada. I don't know that Genki is off base with that little part at the end of that section, but they seem to be a little bit off base. When should Ashita be pronounced Asu instead of Ashita? I've heard it be pronounced this way a couple of times. Asu is a more formal reading of it. Often I've heard it in like morning meetings and stuff when in very formal situations. So it's more formal. So when you're using like kegel and stuff like that, you're going to probably read it as asu. Appreciate it. All right, so let's go ahead and jump on to despite, which is noni, despite or but with noni. So we can use it with a lot of different constructions. It's very similar in usage to things like ga or kedo, but it means something slightly different. So we take the short form of, excuse me, one of these things. We have no ni, and then because of course it means despite, we have an unexpected fact. So despite this, unexpectedly this, and that's what no ni indicates. So for verbs, we can take the short present or past tense plus no ni. For e-adjectives, they're just e-adjectives on their own, or the past tense of an e-adjective, so it could be tanoshi or tanoshikatta no ni. And then for na-adjectives, we need to have na before no ni. So if we're saying kirei na no ni, kirei na no ni. For nouns, we also need to use na. Uh, so sensei na no ni. So it's not a na-adjective, it's a noun, but we're going to be using na before no ni. For na adjectives and nouns in the past tense, so for example, they were a teacher, sensei datta no ni. You're going to use the short form of the past tense of da. So, sensei datta no ni. Despite being a teacher, something. And that's the rules. So, let's jump into some example sentences. Hashitte iru no ni susuma nai. Despite the fact that I'm running, I don't progress. So this is maybe dream. Having a dream. Hashitte iru no ni susumanai. Despite the fact I'm running, I don't progress. So this is the short form of te iru form. So that's fine. You can use the te iru form. No ni, despite that. Susumanai, don't progress. So you'd expect that you'd be progressing if you're running. So the unexpected fact is that you're not progressing. Despite. It can also be translated as but, but despite works here as well. So takai no ni gomi da. It's expensive, but it's garbage. You could also translate this as despite the fact that it's expensive or despite it is expensive, despite the fact it's expensive, despite it being expensive, it's garbage. It's expensive, but it's garbage. It, it, uh, it's a, it rolls off the tongue a little better. But it's not the same but as ga or kedo. Sensei na no ni wakaranai. They're a teacher, but they don't understand. You could probably say that about me a lot. Sensei na no ni wakaranai. You could, it could also be me speaking myself. Nihongo no sensei na no ni wakaranai yo. No, but you wouldn't say sensei about yourself, huh? No, 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 I know. Yuki's saying, demo nihonjin na no ni wakaranai. She's saying, even though ja Japanese, so despite being Japanese, they don't un we don't understand a lot of the time. So. <laughs> Daimondai jana yo. Sore wa sou daro. The ba thing. Anyway, sensei na no ni wakaranai. Despite being a teacher, they don't understand. So, some more complicated sentences. We have takusan aisu wo katta no ni mo nai. You expected there to be ice cream because you bought a bunch. Past tense is fine. But the unexpected fact is that mo nai. This should be purple for a uh, adverb, but that's fine. Takusan aisu wo katta no ni mo nai. Despite the fact that I bought a lot of ice cream, it's already gone. Mo, so that, I'm sorry, that should be pur purple, this guy right here. Nai. Kono heya ga kirei datta no ni. So, interesting thing here. Notice that 
there's nothing after the noni. So you can drop the unexpected event from a sentence that has noni if it's obvious based on context. So for example, mom walks into the room. It's a disaster. Kono heya ga kirei datta no ni. Right? So the, uh, the unexpected fact is that it's not clean now. Kono heya ga kirei datta no ni. Kirei janai. You don't have to say it because it's obvious from context. Instead, you say, dou shita no? You don't have to say that. It's just for example. Kono heya ga kirei datta no ni. Dou shita no? This room is clean, but it's not clean now. What happened? So that's a, that's a very, very common way to just you cut off the end because, yeah. Or maybe something happened, someone gave you some information, you're just like, Gambatta no ni! You got a test result. Mecha benkyo shita no ni! Even though I studied a lot. Right? So that's a fun way to use it. It's not fun, but. Ano hito wa nihonjin na no ni nihongo wo hanase nai. Oh. That person is Japanese, but they can't speak Japanese. Happens a lot. In other countries, obviously. So let's go ahead and jump into the dialogue. I'll read it slowly one time, then at full speed, then we'll go over the English translation and we'll get to question time. We have one more section after this, guys. Hang in there. If you're still here, let me know in the chat or in the comments. Say, I'm still here. All right. Mami-san. Kibishiku yu no ni hanashi wo kiite kuremasen. それはそうですよ。え、ちゃんとトレーニングする時必ずおやつをあげているあげていませんならば話を聞いてくれないでしょう。フォースピー厳しく言うのに話を聞いてくれません。それはそうですよ。ちゃんとトレーニングするとき必ずおやつをあげているあげていませんならば話を聞いてくれないでしょう。Okay, let's go over the English. 厳しく言うのに話を聞いてくれません。Even though I say things in a strict manner, he won't listen to what I say. 話を聞いてくれません。それはそうですよ。Of course that's the case. Hmm? ちゃんとトレーニングするとき uh, As you're supposed to is ちゃんと The ちゃんと maybe should have been here But anyway ちゃんとトレーニングするとき必ずおやつをあげている Are you giving him treats? Do you give him treats without fail? 必ず必ず Like you're supposed to ちゃんと When you are training あげていませんならば話を聞いてくれないでしょう if that's the case, naraba. You can also start sentences with naraba. If, you know, you can. If that's the case, of course he won't listen to what you say. Hanashio kiite kurenai desho. So, question time. What is something you were unsatisfied with despite putting in a lot of effort? Takusan renshu shita no ni daibu dekinai. Even though we practiced a lot, we can't do live shows. Or this could also be translated as Taksan Renshu Stanoni Daibu Dekinai. I'm unable to perform at the live show or something like that. I'm still here, says Simpy. Simpy, how's it going? Good to see ya. Alright. Could that also mean that your running times aren't progressing? Or can that verb not be used that way? Uh, the susumanai. Let's go up there. I bet. Mean, mm, it would depend on the context, I guess. There's probably a better way to say what you're talking about there. Maybe based on the context, if it's like. I feel like there's a better better word for that for pr progress. Jo. Uh, mm, I can't remember. Jōtatsu is what I want to say, but that's probably not the right one. Mm. 
毎日ちょっと早くなろうとしてるんじゃないですか、はい、ち,ょちょこちょこね、はい、ちょこちょこ早くなろうとしてるで毎日走っているのにあの早くな,なってないその早くなってない部分は動詞かなんかね要するにこれこういう動詞とかある進まないってじゃないよね。な、う、っ、ん、進まない,早な,ない、ね。早くならないだよね。それだね。<笑>早くならない is what I just came up with on the spot is probably the better. いや、それじゃなくて俺の文章はあの走っているのに進まない。で、someone asked that could, あの誰かがあのその文章の意味はもしかして早くなってないって意味にもなるでもじ、時間が進んでないとかっていう。いや、でもならないよね。ななうん、no, no, it won't work. You, you'll probably just go with, yeah, what I just said. あの、早くならない。<笑>早くならない。not become faster, for example. Or if you're talking about times,、uh, 時間が縮まらない。ね。そう。縮まらない、which is、uh, to cut, cut off, basically. ちじ。じ、ディアイ、じ、まらない。はい、ちじまらない。ちじまらない。to not cut off time, but you could also say 早くならない。not become faster。so this is human I wouldn't work for that, sorry。one day I might learn kanji。one day。I believe in you。but it does take time。a lot of time。頑張ってください、せずやま。せんぴー。Good to see you. Keep the credit. Thank you, says Yuki chan. Mata ne. Alina, that's all the time I have for Japanese today. Thanks for the great stream. Mata ne. I probably missed you. That was about seven minutes ago. But if you're ever back here watching this stream, I hope you had a good day. Who cares? 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 まだいるありがとう、ジョー。Hey, man. Hey, Simpy. Still here, says Sarah. Yay. 毎日、日本語を勉強するのに言わない。言えないかな ?You can't say it. 話せない、perhaps, is what you mean. You can't speak or you don't speak or you don't say it. I imagine you're probably trying to say you don't speak. So, 毎日日本語を勉強するのに話さない would mean you don't speak. 話せない would mean you can't speak. But I'm not sure which one you want to say. 話さない話さない would probably be your best bet because I've heard you speak and you, you're working hard and you're doing well. Who cares? Apparently, Ashta is. Okay, Yuki. I have a question. Is the word nanka? Can be used as a filler word. Yes, I see it a lot when I'm reading. A lot of times it's used as like, like, like in English. My nichi, gakko ni iku no ni, nan ni mo narai masen. Sore wa tsurai d e s n You're welcome. If you're talking to Andy, think shimpo, so da ne, shimpo also work for progress in this context. Good work. Shimpo shinai. That, that, even the kanji works there, yeah. Shimpo. Yeah, that would be a good word for who asked that question? Greta. Yeah. Masayama san's suggestion there would probably be a good one for that, that sentence as well. Hashitte iru no ni shimpo shinai. Shimpo. That's another good one. Progress. Shimpo suru is the verb. Thank you. Takusan nete iru no ni mada nihongo ga jozu ni naranai. Nani sore? You listening to those,、uh, what is it? The, what's the company that does those stupid eight out listen, learn Japanese while you sleep videos? Japanese won't, Pod 101? Yeah. I used to like their podcasts a lot, their actual podcasts, but they have the eight hours listen to Jap. It's an eight hour video. Learn Japanese while you sleep. So stupid. I can't even, like, like, I have an affiliate program for them because I really like their podcasts and I could promote them, but I just can't. I can't promote a company that makes learn Japanese while you sleep eight hour long videos. 
ethically. My kids are sleeping better now than when you first started, so I'm joining later. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm glad that they're sleeping better, which allows you also to hopefully sleep more. I can't speak. Okay, hanasenai would that that would be, hanasenai. Yeah, and like I said in the Discord the other day, speaking and understanding are they're very different skills in my opinion, and in my experience, and in I think thousands of other people's experiences. Until you actually get as much practice as you can with the speaking, it doesn't come out. Until it comes out fifty times with effort, it doesn't come out effortlessly no matter how much you study. But having the base of the studying and of the exposure to content does help it either. You is say, to, so to say, not to speak. So it's actually the verb to say something. So iwanai would be to not say something. So uh, for example, so your sentence there would be, mainichi nihongo benkyo suru no ni, despite studying every day, I don't say. So what you want to say is I don't speak or I can't speak, so you need to use the verb hanasu. Or shaberu would also work. But hanasu would probably be the best bet here. So hana senai. So you also wanna you also wanna include can. So you wanna use the the um what's the name of it? Potential. So can speak or can't speak, so that would need to be conjugated up into the A column. So hanasu goes up to hanase du hanase nai. Can't speak. I've been re-watching a lot of your older videos, working my way back through it. Otsukare sama desu. Have you been able to meet with uh, the guys that you worked with who are from Japan at all? Or you've probably mostly been working from home for a very long time now, so maybe not. But... Or Simpy, were you the, you were meeting people at like lunch and stuff and studying Japanese, right? Was that you or Hello? Hello, what was his name? He disappeared a very long time ago. But Hello. Hello friend. Hello friend. You you guys were our, like the first people that ever came to our live streams. You and Hello Friend. And I know one of you, I think it was you, was meeting guys at lunchtime and studying Japanese with them. I was curious if you were still doing that. It's possible I'm wrong though, and it could have been Hello Friend. All right, guys, good sentences. So that was me. All right. Sweet. I'm glad I didn't forget that. My mind, my memory still works. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and jump onto our last section, which is just like with no yoni. This is basically a way to create metaphors in Japanese. There are other ways to use yoni and yo, but the only one we're covering today and that Genki covers in this lesson is using it metaphorically. So you take a noun and then use no yoni plus an action or description. Um, so done like a, so an activity happens like this, or a characteristic like this. It'll make more sense with the example sentences. But anyway, you can also do this to compare two different nouns to each other. It's, it's sort of, you'll see it in books all the time in English, like a, a B like a. So I had to change the colors here so that a B didn't look like a B like a. It's, it's still confusing. But anyway, noun a, no yo na. Noun B. So you need to use na here when you're connecting two nouns together, when you're connecting an action and description. So you're using a metaphor to say this action happens like this noun. You use the ni particle. So let's just jump into some example sentences because it's going to make a lot more sense that way. So, taiyo no yo ni hikatte iru. So shining like the sun. So that's what I mean by metaphor, using the word like basically or as in English. And then a noun, so shining like the sun. Taiyo no yo ni hikatte iru. So here's the verb. We're going to be using ni, no yo ni. Shinkansen no yo ni hayai. If we're using a, um, if we go back up here, we have the description. So basically an adjective. You're going to be using ni again. So shinkansen no yo ni hayai. Fast as a bullet train. For two nouns now, we're going to have the na particle. So, nagano no yo na machi. A town like nagano. Nagano no yo na machi. A town like nagano. So, using basically this, this is less like a metaphor and more like placing this within a category. A town like nagano. So, that's not no longer a metaphor, but is metaphor the word I'm looking for here? Can someone confirm that? I feel like metaphor is the right word, but sometimes I mess up my English. So, 
but this is not a metaphor. Some more complicated sentences using the same patterns and the same words. We've got kare no kuruma wa tayo no you ni hikatte iru. His car is shining like the sun. It's beautiful. Andy wa mukashi shinkansen no you ni hayakatta. A long time ago, Andy was as fast as a bullet train. That's an exaggeration. <laughs> Shinkansen's go like 170 miles per hour. Yuki just said, what are you talking about? Like, a long time ago, Shinkansen's were slow is what you mean? <laughs> anyway, Narubeku, Nagano no yo na machi ni sumitai. If possible, I want to live in a town like Nagano. This is one you'd use the noun to noun comparison. So I want to live in a town similar to or like Nagano. So they're, they're actually quite different in meaning. This seems more literary comparing an action or a description to an actual item and compare and using it with two nouns. It's more like just making this place one of a type. In this case, machi. So let's go over it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the dialogue. I'll read it slowly one time, then at full speed. Go over the English translations, get into question time, and I believe we're done for the tonight. So good job, guys. Yuki and Mami. Akachan no yo ni neteiru ne. Kawaii. Mm. Training wo hajimete kara oriko da yo. Sorry. I ne. Watashi mo nomi chan no yo na inu wo kaitai na. Saisho wa kono ko no yo ni abare nai to i ne. Ma, so shita ra mami san ga toreningu shite kure ru de sho. Nanda to? Full speed. <clears throat> Aka chan no yo ni nete iru ne. Kawaii. Mm. トレーニングを始めてからお利口だよ。いいね。私も飲みちゃんのようなイヌを飼いたいな。最初はこの子のように暴れないといいね。まあそしたらマミマミさんがトレーニングしてくれるでしょ。なんだと。はい、let's jump into the English. 赤ちゃんのように寝ているね。可愛い。He's sleeping like a baby. Isn't he? Self-explanatory, I, I hope. So since we started training, I don't know if we've gone over this kara. I, I feel like we didn't cover kara and made in relation to time in Genki 1. We should have if we didn't, but anyway. Since we started training, he's been well-behaved. So oriko means well-behaved. Good boy, basically. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> Ine, that's great. Watashi mo nomi chan no yo na inu wo kaitai na. I also want to have a dog like Normie. So this is comparing to noun, so it's more like putting him into a category of dog. A dog like Normie, similar to Normie. Saisho wa kono ko no yo ni abare nai to ne. This verb definitely doesn't show up in Genki, but I wanted to bring it up here because I like it. Saisho, in the beginning, I hope he doesn't act violently like this one. Kono ko no yo ni abare nai to ii ne. Act violently. Yeah, yeah, basically just like going crazy. Kids can abare do as well when they're going crazy and they're angry and stuff, or having a fit. Ma, so shitara, mami san ga toreiningu shite kureru de sho. Well, if that happens, you'll train him for me, right? Nanda to? What did you say? You hear this one from time to time in shows and in anime. Maybe you can use it sometime yourself. Nanda to? What did you say? You're not happy about whatever you heard and you want to say it again. Nanda to? Alright, so. I would like you to combine these two pictures. To, uh, to yeah, just combine the two pictures using no yo ni. This one's going to be no yo ni. Right? So you're combining... Uh, this, this is the thing that this uh, adjective is like. Sh should be pretty straightforward. Please combine them. Shouldn't, yeah. Anyway, that was me. 
Even if I was at work, they've banned lunch gatherings. Ah! Well, I mean, it makes sense. It is a hospital, I guess. But still sad. Simile uses like as. Okay, simile. Metaphor does the same thing without like. Simile. So let's jump back. The word I was looking for this whole time was simile. Not metaphor, simile. I'm going to cut that out and put that right back at the beginning of this section on the stream cut. Not metaphor, simile. Appreciate that. I think it's a simile. That's it. Thank you. I guess yona can sometimes be similar to mitai. Yes, uh, very similar to mitai. Almost identical, to be honest, in usage to mitai. That's something else I didn't mention. Thank you for bringing that up, Meng Kong. I'll probably put this in the cut as well. Yona uh, is almost identical to mitai in usage and in meaning. Thank you so much for this. You're welcome, iconic Dion. Thank you for stopping by. I hope that they, uh, they're they helping you out the lessons. All right. Mitayo? Right. No takers? I can answer it for you. Oh, there we go. Superman no yo ni tsuyoi. That's it. That's the sentence. All right. Bananas for evening smile. Perfect. All right. Let's see if anyone can get this one right. I like this one. Same idea. Hmm. Michael Martin, I don't know if you're here right now in the stream, but if you are, I just got a notification that you bought me a Kofi, a coffee on Kofi. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. I don't know if you're at the live stream or if you just jumped off from another video, but Michael Martin, thank you so much. Appreciate that. I'll send you a message on there later. One thing I wanted to mention is that if I do apologize for if it's a little bit confusing, I actually might get rid of Ko-Fi just to take away the confusion. Some people sometimes are, want to put like a donation in the YouTube live chat. And those that's separate from the Ko-Fi. They're a little bit different. The donation thing on YouTube is the little button down at, below the chat. There's like a little money button. It's not available in, in all countries. So that might be, why, be, might be why you don't see it. But I'm not able to get the Ko-Fi notifications to show up on stream yet. I don't think there's an integration between my streaming software and Ko-Fi. Eventually, maybe I will be able to combine them so that there's a notification that shows up on stream from Ko-Fi's. But at the moment, that's not possible. So, Kaizoku no yona. <laughs> Kaizoku no yona. Superman no yo ni muki muki. There's another good sentence from Come to Japan. Subarashi! Namake mono no yo na kaizoku ga ni hiki. Are. Namake mono no yo na kaizoku ga ni hiki. I like that one, Yuki. Kaizoku no yo na. Yes. What I was looking for. Ah. Ochita toki ni ita ga. キレるように腰を、ん破れる、破れます。どういうこと破れます。腰を折れるかな腰を折れる折れる。折れちゃダメですね。破れるんじゃないかな腰を破れない。You don't so that's a different usage of yoni for starters. So completely different usage of it. So it's uh you that meaning would be um kireru yoni so that it would break is what that yoni means. So something completely different. So that it would break koshi wo koshi wo yaburemasu. I'm not sure what you mean there, man, but it's a good try. Unrelated question, but when wanting to say something occurred, when should okiru be used compared to okoru? Uh, one is intransitive, one is transitive. I can't remember exactly which is which because I don't use them very much in conversation. I think I use okoru usually, which would mean it was transitive. Hold on a second, I need to look it up. Intransitive is okiru. Okoru. Okoru is not transitive. Okoru is to happen. Okoru. 
they're both intransitive. Okay. Oh, no, no. Yeah, they're both intransitive. To happen to okiru. I can't remember. I've looked that up a lot on my own as well. Okiru okoru. Ah, okiru. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Okiru is usually used, I mean, it, it, for one thing, it means to wake up. So it can be used just for getting up or waking up. But it can also be used for, like, um, when bad things happen, it seems. Whereas okoru is just, it just, it something happens. So okiru is used a little bit more for negative things happening, it, it appears. Do you snap it? I don't know. Dou omoimasu ka, Yuki? Ke, ano, koshi o kega suru toki ni. <laughs> Every time I, I try to explain to Yuki what someone's trying to say in Japanese to ask her what she thinks the answer should be, I end up saying the answer in my description. I should just do that all the time. Try to describe what I think people are trying to say in Japanese and then I just magically get the right answer. It's, it's like a superpower. I like it. You could just say injure, to injure your, your hip. Uh, so, koshi o kega, kega suru, kega suru, kega ne. There might be a better word for it, but that one works for sure. But I still don't know, I still don't think your yoni works there because you're saying that, you're saying that you injured your hip so that the board would break. So I think you, the, the it's mixed up there, but also it's different. I think transitive is okosu. Yes, transitive is okosu. Namake mono no yona. Namake mono. Ah, namakeru. Ah, close. Namake mono no yona. Namake mono is what I was looking for. I was looking for namake mono no yona. Namake mono. Thank you, one in it. I appreciate it. Keep it up. Keep it up. Have a good. Have a good day. Appreciate that. Last one here today, today guys. Last example. For men kong and tokini, ano ko ita ga wareru is more better instead of kireru, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ita ga wareru. Mm. Kireru is more like the cut. Ita ga wareru. Maybe works better. For sure. Still, I think his sentence is backwards as well. What he's trying to say, I feel like. But yeah, ware, wareru might be better for ita. If you were going to cut it, 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 I feel like you're using, so with kireru, uh, did you use kiru, kireru? I feel like you're using something to cut it, but I'm not sure. Thanks for the clarification. You guys are doing great at disseminating genki. Great work, says Riziano. Thank you. I appreciate that. I hope that you're, I'm glad to hear that you're finding the content useful. We put a ton of work into it, so it's really nice to hear that it's helping. I'll leave this one up on the screen for another minute. I was trying to say, when I fall, my hip snapped like a breaking board. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I see what you're saying there, okay. So in that case, you need to, you need to nominalize the sentence that comes before. Okay, so now we can make a sentence with your thing there. Sorry, I missed that Mengkong. Kong. Okay, so, koronda toki, koronda toki, koronda toki, ano ita ga wareru, wareru no you ni. Koshi wo utta? Snapped is like a. Ano. Koshi ga. Koshi o oreta ne? Kosetsu shita? Wo. Oremashita demo ii no kana. Masayama san dou moimasu ka? Kosetsu shita? Kega ja nai ne? Oreta? Kosetsu shita? Kosetsu. Kosetsu. Yeah, there you go. Kosetsu shita. 
転んだ時板が割れるのように割れたように割れたのようにちょっと待って。転んだ時、うん、I still think 板が割れる割れたように、うんうんうん、でもそれは起こってなくて次の分はもう起こった、うん、割れたようにあ割れたように割れたのように割れたようにのようにじゃないの割れたように割れたように腰が骨折を腰が骨折骨折した。So it's definitely a different yoni. Yo, they don't teach the yoni that is dealt with, that deals with verbs. So I guess you don't need to nominalize it in this lesson of Genki. So you're jumping, jumping, a, jumping a few steps ahead, but it, but it works. So, ita ga wareta yoni koshi ga kosetsu shita. Kosetsu is the bone fracture, basically. I don't know. Oreta? We're, we're probably、uh, stuck on the wrong part. Oreta or kosetsu shita. Not sure which is best. Anyway, doesn't look like kame no yoni oso. It says come to Japan, yes. Andy, when do you think you're going to start doing lessons based on quartet? I have so much to catch up on. So. I'll answer your question in one second. That brings us to the end of this lesson. Thank you for being here, guys. Thumbs up. Please smash the thumbs up like. Please smash the thumbs up like. I think my brain has finished for today. It's, it's just done. I'll come back to this. Sarah, let me answer your question.、Um, I said in my、uh, Patreon post that I was going to start around April 18th, but I think. We're going to push it to around May 2nd because it's rushing it too much for sure. And I think a lot of people would like to catch up as much as they can. So we're probably going to try and start around May 2nd. See you later, Masayama san. Thank you for being here.、Um, yeah. So what will happen is we're going to finish Genki 2 on, I believe, the 14th, will be our last lesson. Then I'll do the stream cut on the 15th. That Monday, and I'll get that out to patrons. And that'll release on the Saturday, I guess. And then I'm going to take a week off. I'm going to take a week off until the. Because I need I haven't had a week off in over a year. Basically, since I started YouTube, I haven't had more. I haven't had even a full weekend off for the most part since I started YouTube over a year and a year and a half ago. So I'm going to take five days off. Then the 21st, we'll do the practice stream. And then Yuki and I are going to start making the. The Genki 2 tests. So that'll take us about two weeks to make all those tests. It takes a long time, at least two weeks. So at the earliest, we'll finish those on the 4th of April, which would give us two weeks to prepare new content for Quartet, new Patreon content, and a bunch of other things. It's just not enough time. So we're probably going to give ourselves an extra two weeks and start on May 2nd. So give, us, give ourselves a month before we start releasing Quartet content. Yes. TokiniAndy.exe has stopped working. Time to reboot. That is exactly what just happened. I don't. That was <laughs> fun. All right. You're welcome, Martin Liu. You're welcome.、Uh, you're very welcome. And you're very welcome, Greta. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ftaritomo, arigato gozaimashita. Otskare sama. Arigato gozaimas. Evening smile. Do i tashimashite. Says Masayama. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to fail Genki 2 test so hard. I believe in you, Meng Kong. You can do it. I'm going to make them as hard as I can. Thanks for everything, Andy. Thank you. Come, Simpy. Simpy is, is our, our longest patron, I think, based on the order that shows up in the spreadsheet, from which I make what I'm about to press the button for. Simpy's the first one there. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. What test? The tests are coming to Patreon soon. The test he's releasing later. Yes. <laughs> One chapter for a week for me. Hope I can make it. Don't rush yourself. But if you can, it'll be awesome. But sleep all night. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Infobroad, Andy, I fell asleep to your voice. 
I'm, I'm happy you're able to do, to do that. I've never thought of my voice as one that one could fall asleep to, but maybe it is. I don't know if that's good for, for language videos, but <laughs> finally, finally a short weekend. Go to bed and rest. Yes, indeed. All right, let's try this again. Oh, wait, is there a Genki 1 test? Yes, there's tests already for all of Genki 1 on the Patreon. So let's try this again. Thank you so very much for... Nope, not going to work. It's just not going to happen. Thank you so much for being here tonight, guys. Please, thumbs up. Oh, kogeki shite kudasai. Smash the thumbs up button. If you haven't already, I think most of you have already because there's 22 people here and 39 likes, so I think we're doing okay there. Also, channel toroku onegaishimasu. Please subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we go live with these live streams and with any new videos that might be coming in the future. Thank you so much for being here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the ending because clearly it's time for bed based on how everything's going right now. But thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Come to Japan, Dan. Re-say your outro for stream cut. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's everything. Thanks so much, guys. This is a long one. We went over a lot of content. I hope that it sticks. The new tongue twister from Andy. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Thank you, Carbidium. See you next time. Woo! ありがとうございます。お疲れ様でした。また次のビデオで会いましょうね。日本語勉強したいのか?俺と同じ風に日本語を喋れるようになりたいのか?この本持ってるのか?でも、無理って言おうと思った。On the Tokini Andy Patreon, we have listening and shadowing practice. Genki vocabulary practice. Genki textbook practice where Yuki, Ando, and I are your partners. Eventually, even workbook practice. え?そうなの? Kyurio出る? Uh, yeah, sure. After Genki 1, we'll be covering Genki 2, and eventually, even intermediate textbooks. Detailed grammar lessons and Japanese Q&As will, as always, be on the YouTube for free. Tokini Andy Patreon, live right now. Yoroshiku ne. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu.